Okay, let's calculate a surface integral when the function is given to you implicitly. Now, that just means that the x, y, and z are all uh, mixed in together, um, and we have this function we call capital F. Now, even if it is um, where you could solve for the z, even if it is where you have z is some, um, let's use a lowercase, I don't know, g, f, lowercase f, even if this is the case, then the way you make up the capital F is just by uh, subtracting it over. Um, so you can make up the capital F of x, y, z by um, taking z and subtracting the function f. So even if it is explicit, you can do it as if it was implicit. Okay, so this is explicit. And then um, th when you're doing it with the capital F, you're doing it as if it's implicit. Sometimes um, you could you could still solve for z in your function, and so you could do it as an explicit, but um, we can work with this uh, formula too. So the function needs to be continuous and differentiable, and then there's some closed and bounded shadow region in the, uh, in the plane beneath it. The plane beneath it doesn't have to be the xy plane, um, but when it is, then the, the unit vector that you choose will be i. p can either be i, j, or k, we'll say. Um, i when you, your shadow is on the xy plane. And then um, the others uh, are the normal vectors to the, to the planes of the, where your shadow is at. j is the normal vector to the, to the xz plane. I'm sorry, not i, this is uh, k. K when you're on the X, Z, Y plane, J when you're on the X, Z plane, and and uh, and I when you're on the uh, the Y, Z plane. So um, most of the time it'll just be a, a K for your P, a unit vector normal to the to the region R. That region R is a shadow region in a coordinate plane. And we need to take this dot product between the gradient of F and P. And there's our multivariable function G that we're integrating. Um, that function over the region S. Okay, all right, let's go work an example. We have to integrate this multivariable function G, where we add them up, over the portion of the plane that lies in the first octant. We have this plane, 2x plus 2y plus z equals 2. This is our surface, and it's definitely a... Um, surface that we can ex represent explicitly but we're gonna do it as an implicit function leave it exactly like it is and call the uh, the entire thing capital F and we'll work with the formula which has us taking the gradient of F that's convenient when you have a plane the gradient is constant partially with respect to X is 2 and with respect to Y is 2 with respect to Z it's 1 uh, we choose this version because we want to point um, the, uh, the normal points uh, upward and then we uh, take the magnitude of that, and this ends up as a constant. Well, we square the 2, get a 4. Square the 2, get a 4. 4 and 4 is 8, plus a 1 is 9, conveniently. So this guy has a constant uh, gradient of 3. Okay. And then we, um, we well, what happens on the xy plane? Um, when you take the shadow of this, uh, of this plane down to the xy plane, that's where z equals 0. And if z equals 0, then you have 2x plus 2y equals 2. And then dividing out by all those 2s, what you get is um, y equals uh, 1 minus x. That's the line that cuts um, the plane, basically, in 3D. Uh, the plane looks like this. We have the x, um, the x, y, and z axis. And you hit the x axis at 1. You hit the y axis at 1. But you hit the z axis at 2. So there's the plane in the uh, first octant there. The shadow region is, what, um, is what's shown over here. We have a region R and, and we, hit it, we hit it 1, we hit it uh, 1. This is the line y equals 1 minus x. So this is in the xy plane. What does that make our p? The p is the, uh, the normal vector to your region R, so p is going to be k for us. And so p is k. And then um, we have to dot. We have to take the we have to take the uh, the 
f, the gradient of f, and dot it with p. But um, but p has zeros as i's and j's, and so the um, the gradient of f dot it with p is just going to be a one. Now, had it been negative, we thought these these are actually absolute value bars because there's a number inside from the dot product, and so. Um, it could be a function inside if this had functions on it, if this had x, y, or z's in it. All right, so we have all the elements we need. Let's put it all together. We're supposed to calculate this, this surface integral, and we need to go and uh, work with this formula. We have the gradient of f, which is 3. The magnitude of the gradient is 3. This uh, absolute value of the dot product, which is 1. So that can come outside as a 3. And then we... Um, the, the multivariable function of x, y, and z, the z can't stay there anymore. So we replace z by the, uh, the function here from the plane. And so z is equal to uh, 2 minus 2y minus 2x. That's what z is equal to. And so every place we see a z, we put that. So instead of x plus y plus z, we have x plus y plus that. And now the region R... It's going to be done as dy dx, the best way to do it. So we have, a, or it could be done as dx dy too. Uh, but as dy dx, we have um, the lower bound on y is y equals 0. The upper bound on y is the function 1 minus x. Then this gets moved from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So those are our bounds. When we combine these, we have an x minus a 2x. So we have a, a minus x, a y minus a 2y. So we have a minus y. And then we still have this 2. So there's the integrand simplified. And we're going to integrate with respect to y first. So we'll have 2y minus xy minus y squared over 2. We have to evaluate that from 0 up to 1 minus x. When we plug a 0 in, we'll definitely get 0 for y. When we plug a 1 in, a 1 minus x in for y, it gets a little complicated. We get 2 times the quantity of 1 minus x minus x times the quantity of 1 minus x minus the quantity of 1 minus x squared all over 2 and that can be problematic working that out just take your time with it um, distribute and then square out first here before you distribute so we get uh, 2 minus 2x minus x plus x squared from distributing and then we have a half a negative half times this guy squared which is 1 minus 2x plus x squared that's what this guy squared is and we have to multiply that by a negative half let's go ahead and distribute that distribute that across and at the same time uh, watch out here for the uh, combining this minus 2x and this minus x we'll call that minus 3x And then um, the minus one half, the plus x, and the minus one half x squared. Combining like terms, we have a two take away a half. So that's going to give us our three halves. We have a negative three x and an x. So that's going to give us negative two x. And we have a positive one x squared minus a half of x squared. So that gives us positive a half x squared. And now we're integrating this with respect to x from 0 to 1. We get 3 halves of x minus the x squared. And this one will be x cubed over 6. And we just have to put the 1 in. Thankfully, the 0 gives us 0 again. And the 1 is just going to make the x's turn into 1's. We'll have 3 halves minus 1 plus a sixth. And all of that is times the 3. Don't forget about the 3 from the, uh, the magnitude of the gradient way back in the beginning. I think it best is to, uh, our best bet is to distribute the 3 across. So we get the 3 times the 3 halves, the 3 times the negative 1, and the 3 times the 6th. We end up with 9 halves minus 3 um, plus a half. And then we'll put these two guys together, the 9 halves and the half give you uh, 10 of these halves, which is 5. So 5 minus 3, the final answer is 2. So there's a surface integral done 
implicitly, as if the function, the surface was defined implicitly, an implicit function of x.